Hi, my name is Kristen, and I'm on the university recruiting team at Microsoft. Hi, my name is David, and I'm an engineer in the hardware space at Microsoft. Did you know that Microsoft is a software and hardware company? We know- oh, that Hardware company? How is Microsoft a hardware company? It only makes Xbox. Don't you work in hardware? Anyway, every year we are actively looking for university candidates interested in hardware engineering positions under our gaming, devices, and cloud and AI organizations. We hope that this video will be a great resource in helping you prepare for your potential interview. We are going to start by sharing a bit about our hardware roles. Then, David will talk about a day in his life as a Microsoft engineer. Lastly, we will review a technical interview example and share some tips. You may be wondering what roles we recruit for in the hardware space. We are actively looking to hire engineers in mechanical, electrical, firmware, technical program management, silicon, supply chain, and other related fields. David, tell us about a day as an engineer in devices and how you partner with the other hardware roles. Well, I'm what you call a mechie. I study mechanical engineering and I was hired as an intern at Microsoft. Now I'm a full-time engineer in the devices organization, working on hardware products at Microsoft. On a day-to-day -day basis, I partner with mechanical and electrical engineers to innovate design and enable manufacturing automation. I create prototype devices and I collaborate with program managers to meet product requirements and deadlines. At Microsoft, I'm given the freedom to innovate and make lasting impact on cutting edge products. It's a ton of fun and super exciting. Kristen is going to share about the hardware candidate interview experience. The interview will be a combination of behavioral, technical, and resume-based questions. It's important to note that anything on your resume could be brought up by an interviewer, so make sure you feel comfortable discussing your projects and using concepts or skills that you list on your resume. All our interviewers are essentially looking to gauge what you know, how you go about solving problems, and what it's like to work with you. Most importantly, remember that your interviewer wants you to succeed and do well in your interview. We encourage you to be your authentic self, share what you're passionate about, and showcase your knowledge and skills to the best of your ability. One strategy we recommend using during your hardware engineering interview is the SOAR method, which stands for Situation, Objective, Action, Results, and Aftermath. I'm going to demonstrate how to apply SORA in a technical interview, but feel free to find out more information by Googling it. Binging it. Okay, David, I'm going to be the interviewer and you're going to be the candidate. Hi, David. Let's start with the technical question. If you were tasked to assemble a glass display to this laptop, walk me through what you would do to solve this problem. Feel free to use the whiteboard to assist you. The first part of Sora is defining the situation. Ask many clarifying questions to understand critical parameters and know which assumptions you should make. Kristen, I've never done such a process before, so I have a few questions. What is the success of the assembly based on? Does it have to be assembled by hand? Are there any fasteners used to attach the display to the laptop? These are great questions, David, but I can only answer some of these to a certain extent. One, let's assume that the display fits perfectly with the laptop. Displays are fragile, so we cannot break them. Second, you are not limited to assembling by hand. Third, because the display is made of glass, most fasteners are not feasible. The second part of Sora is identifying the objective. It can help to rephrase your objective in your own words so you can have understanding with the interviewer. Okay, thanks Kristen, that was very helpful. So basically the touchscreen display is a very fragile part that needs to be functional, safely placed, and attached without fasteners. Yes, I would say that is spot on. The third part of Sora is outlining a plan to take action and solve the problem. I need to ensure that Kristen knows how I'm going to solve the problem. But I also need to state any assumptions I am making and ask any clarified questions. Kristen, there are a lot of different ways to approach this. I think there are three to four different areas that are critical to defining a solution. Handling the material, how to avoid damaging it, attaching the glass to the display, and how to make it safe. I see that you added safety to your list. That's really impressive because safety is an important element in engineering at Microsoft. Thanks. Off the top of my head, displays can be handled using soft materials such as styrofoam or cushions or rubber. 
or we could use a robot for handling. It would be interesting to use magnetic locking systems and metal clips as well. Lastly, it would be a safer process by having it completely enclosed and could be monitored with cameras. I think that's everything I can think of for now and I'm ready to give this a shot. I would use rubber for the handling because it is a soft and compliant material. Use a robot to place the display because it has a much better precision than in person. Then we could add clips to the display. It would make the displays easy to attach and even easier to remove for repair. I used to work at a phone repair shop and it was super frustrating trying to remove a phone screen using a hairdryer and wedge. That's really interesting. We have never tried something such as clips, but repair is something that is becoming a hot topic in consumer electronics. So having consideration of that in your solution is really impressive. Thanks. Lastly, I think having a safe solution is important. And this should be inaccessible to operators unless it is turned off and cameras can monitor any incidents with the equipment. The fourth part of Sora is the final results. David presents his final solution and waits to hear if it was solved correctly. Okay, now that your solution is chosen, how does all of this work together? First, the laptop without display can lay flat on a table in a box. The display will be placed in a predetermined spot so the robot can find it. Then, a rubber hand of the robot will pick up the touchscreen display very gently. When the robot places the display, it will engage the clips. This will all happen in an enclosed space where a person is not needed and can be monitored with cameras by a technician. Commonly, you think you're done after you present the final results, but often there is an aftermath piece when solving real world problems. It is important to share what you learned and how you can improve your solution. What do you think of my answer? Your thought process was easy to observe and your conclusion makes a lot of sense. You got some components spot on. Using a rubber interface to pick up the glass and using robots for handling is a safe approach and aligns with our safety values in Microsoft devices. However, the clip retention idea would take a lot of engineering coordination to make it possible. So I want to challenge your approach a step further. What else could you add to your answer to make it more robust and sustainable? Would this work on the first try? Nothing I've ever made works on the first try. Actually, I think it would be really important to test my solution with some prototypes. I get feedback from engineering colleagues too. I think getting more perspectives makes a lot of sense. Gaining additional perspectives and being open to feedback is a really important element at Microsoft. We don't know everything and have to be aware of that and look for more knowledge from outside sources. That's what makes products great. I agree. Do you have any questions before we wrap up? Actually, can my office be located here? Let's see if you receive an offer first. Now that we've taken you through the process, be sure to study and practice for your interviews. The more you feel prepared, the more you'll be able to show up as the best version of yourself. Remember to leverage your engineering coursework and school projects, and apply the skills learned from outside experiences like personal projects. For the end of your interview, we recommend preparing one to two thoughtful questions in advance. Remember that you're interviewing Microsoft as well to ensure it's a good fit for you. Most importantly, have confidence in yourself. Know that you were selected to interview with us for a reason, so we want you to succeed. Thanks so much for watching, and good luck on your interview. Be sure to submit your application at microsoft.com university. So about this treehouse, I think I could actually get my office here. <laughs>